Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to use a multimeter. For those who don't know what a multimeter is, well, multimeter is something you use to measure electrical values such as voltage, current, and resistance in electronic devices you'll find in your car or in your house. This video is geared specifically to beginners, so I'm going to cover all the basic functions of a multimeter and also help you answer the question, what is a good multimeter and where can you buy one? The good thing about multimeters is that they are very inexpensive, yet they can give you an incredible amount of information once you learn how to use them. Before we start learning how to use a multimeter, let's have a look at some of the basics of electricity. Electricity can be defined as a flow of electrons. If the electrons are not moving, we call it static electricity. If the electrons are moving on a conductive material, then we call it electric current. When it comes to multimeters, we only talk about electric current. There are two types of electric current, DC current and AC current. DC means direct current, means the direction of the current always flows in one direction. For example, any device that runs off of a battery is run by DC current. Next up we have the AC current. AC means alternative current, where the direction of the current always change. For example, the current coming through your wall outlet is AC current, so as most of the appliances you connect to it. Now let's have a look at multimeters. There are two types of multimeters, manual range multimeters and auto range multimeters. Whatever multimeter you buy, they always comes with at least two leads. One is red and one is black. The black lead always goes to the common jack where it says common. The red lead goes to either of these two jacks depending on what you're measuring. If you're measuring volts, resistance or milliamps, then you want to plug the red lead into this jack. If you are measuring larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. Different multimeters may have different setup for the red jack. For example, in this multimeter, if you are testing volts, resistance or diodes, then the red lead goes here. If you are testing smaller currents in milliamps or microamps, then the red lead goes here. For larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. First, we will take a look at a very cheap manual range multimeter. We are going to be looking at DC voltage. AC voltage, amps, resistance, and continuity. Let's start with DC voltage. I'm gonna test this car battery to see if it's good. So you need to have the red lead in this jack where it says volt. Because the car batteries are in 12 volts range, you wanna turn the dial into the next number up from 12. So in this multimeter, 20 is the closest number up from 12. Then you wanna connect the red lead to the positive terminal and the black lead to the negative terminal. We have 12.9 volts here, and that is a good reading. If the reading was very low, then you definitely have a weak battery, and you want to replace it. Let's say you connect the leads backwards. It's not going to do any damage, but the reading on the multimeter will be negative, letting you know that the current is flowing the other direction. That way you can identify the polarity, which is handy. Let's say you don't know the amount of voltage you want to measure. Well, then you always want to start from the highest number available in your multimeter, and work your way down until you get an accurate reading. When I say an accurate reading, a reading with two decimals is accurate enough for most cases. If you get a reading of 1, that means the voltage you're going to measure is beyond the selected range of your multimeter, so you want to scale up until you get two decimal places. Let's move on to AC voltage. Let's see if this volt outlet is working. Now you want to turn the dial into AC volts, and we have two readings. One is 200 volts, and one is 750 volts. Now if you turn the dial into 200 volts, then the multimeter will only read up to 200. That is good if you live in a country where household voltage is in 115 range. But in Australia, wall outlets have 240 volts, so I'm going to turn the dial into 750, because that is the next one up we have on this multimeter. You want to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to touch these metal tips of the probes. And also you want to make sure your test leads are not damaged or having any exposed wires, because you're dealing with high voltage and you don't want to get electrocuted. Then you want to probe into the outlet, and we have 240 volts. Let's move on to measuring resistance. This is very easy. All you have to do is to turn the dial into resistance. This horseshoe mark right here is the standard symbol for the resistance. And if you look down here, the red list stays in the same place because this jack can read resistance as well. Resistance means how hard it is for the current to flow through in a circuit. So let's say you measure the resistance of something while it is still connected to a power source. Or still connected to a circuit board, then the multimeter will take a different path with the least resistance between the test leads and will give you a false reading. So whenever you test resistance, 
you always want to isolate the subject you're trying to work on. Here I'm measuring the resistance of a blower motor. Here I'm measuring the resistance of a fuel injector. Now here's a practical example. Let's say one of the fuel injectors in your car went out. A brand new one is often very expensive. So let's say you're thinking about buying a used one from a junkyard. Then the only way you can figure out whether this is a good one or a bad one is to check the resistance and see if the reading meets the manufacturer specs. If the reading is different than what is mentioned in the specs, that means you're looking at a bad injector so you're gonna look for another one. Next up we have the continuity. You can use this function to see if you have continuity between two points. If you have continuity, then the multimeter will beep. This cheap multimeter does not have a beep function. So let's move on to this one. Now you don't turn the dial into this symbol that looks like a speaker. That is continuity. And the red lead still stays in the same place where it says resistance. Let's see if this piece of wire is broken. We hear the beep, so this wire is good. Here I'm testing the fuses in my car to see if I have burned fuse. Here I'm testing an earphone. Finally, let's move on to measuring current. If you are measuring milliamps, then the red lead stays in here. If you are measuring larger currents up to 10 amps, then the red lead goes here. If you are not sure about how much current you're going to measure, then always start from the amps instead of milliamps. That way you wouldn't damage your multimeter. And if the reading is actually in very low amps, then you can move on to milliamps for more accuracy. Now, unlike measuring volts, resistance or continuity where we place the test leads in parallel to the flow, now we have splicing the test leads in series with the flow. Here's an example of a fan connected to a battery. Here we have the negative side and here we have the positive side. To measure amps, here we have the multimeter spliced into the power side wire and as you can see, we have a reading of 5.5 amps. Now let me show you something real quick. As you can see, when the motor first started to spin, it draws a lot of current. Now it is normal to draw a little more current in the beginning but too much current means the motor is very hard to spin which is a classic sign for a sticky bearing and this could be the reason why your car's fuse for the blow motor keeps blowing once in a while. Alright now that's how you properly use a multimeter for basic functions. The only downside is that when you are using a manual range multimeter like this you always have to turn the dial into different settings. So if you're thinking about buying a multimeter, make sure you buy an auto range multimeter. You just have to select what you are going to measure. AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance, continuity, amps and start measuring. Trust me, this is going to make your life that much easier. And if you're going to be using your multimeter all the time to measure amps, then you can think about buying a multimeter with an amp clamp. This has all the basic functions of a multimeter. It has two jacks for the test leads. But when you're measuring amps, rather than splicing in your multimeter and messing around with the wires, you can easily clamp it over the wire and get the reading. For regular users, there are lots of cheap but decent quality auto range multimeters available in the market. If you can, try to find one with some useful additional features like reading temperatures, record peak values, and safety features and so on. I wouldn't go much into it because those features aren't that necessary when you first start out. Last but not least, add some alligator clips and some jumper wires for your shopping cart because this is gonna set your hands free when you need them. The next question you may have is where to buy a good multimeter and what is a good brand. You can buy a decent multimeter from any good electronic shop or from online shops. Speaking about the brand, good brands are often very expensive and those are mainly for professional users. So if you are a beginner, most multimeters in $50 to $100 range will serve your purpose. Hopefully this video is helpful and if it is, press that like button and also see my other videos to learn more on how to use a multimeter to fix your own car at home and save yourself a bunch of money. Also we have cool videos coming up so if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider subscribing so you'll never miss another video. As always, all the tools I have used in this video are linked in the description down below so you can easily find them and I'll see you in the next one.